Section 38 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 21 How to Market and the Seasons of the Year for Butcher's Meat, Poultry, Fish, Herbs, Roots, etc., and Fruit. Pieces in a Bullock The Head, Tongue, Palate the entrails are the sweetbreads, kidneys, skirts, and tripe. There is the double, the roll, and the reed tripe. The forequarter. First is the haunch, which includes the clod, marrowbone, shin, and the sticking piece, that is, the neck end. The next is the leg of mutton piece, which has part of the blade bone. Then the chuck, the brisket, the fore ribs, and the middle rib, which is called the chuck rib. The hind quarter. First, sirloin and rump, the thin and thick flank, the veiny piece, then the isk bone, or chuck bone, buttock and leg. In a sheep. The head and pluck, which includes the liver, lights, heart, sweetbreads, and melt. The forequarter the neck, breast, and shoulder, the hind quarter, the leg and loin. The two loins together is called a chine of mutton, which is a fine joint when it is the little fat mutton. In a calf, the head and inwards are the pluck, which contains the heart, liver, lights, nut, and melt, and what they call the skirts, which eat finely broiled the throat sweetbread, and the windpipe sweetbread, which is the finest. The forequarter is the shoulder, neck, and breast. The hindquarter is the leg, which contains the knuckle and fillet, then the loin. In a house lamb, the head and pluck, that is, the liver, lights, heart, nut, and melt. Then there is the fry, which is the sweetbreads, lambstones and skirts with some of the liver the forequarter is the shoulder neck and breast together the hindquarter is the leg and loin this is in high season at christmas but lasts all the year grass lamb comes in in april or may according to the season of the year and holds good till the middle of august in a hog the head and inwards, and that is the haslet, which is the liver and crow, kidney and skirts. It is mixed with a great deal of sage and sweet herbs, pepper, salt and spice, so rolled in the caul and roasted. Then there are the chitterling and the guts, which are cleaned for sausages. The forequarter is the forloin and spring. If a large hog, you may cut a spare rib off. The hindquarter, only leg and loin. A bacon hog. This is cut different because of making hams, bacon, and pickled pork. Here you have fine spare ribs, chines, and griskins, and fat for hog's lard. The liver and crow is much admired fried with bacon. The feet and ears are both equally good soused. Pork comes in season at Bartholomew Tide and holds good till Lady Day. How to choose butcher's meat? To choose lamb. In a forequarter of lamb, mind the neck vein. If it be an azure blue, it is new and good but if greenish or yellowish, it is near tainting, if not tainted already. In the hinder quarter, smell under the kidney and try the knuckle. If you meet with a faint scent and the knuckle be limber, it is stale killed. For a lamb's head, mind the eyes. If they be sunk or wrinkled, it is stale. If plump and lively, it is new and sweet. Veal. If the bloody vein in the shoulder looks blue or a bright red, it is new killed. But if blackish, greenish, or yellowish, it is flabby and stale. 
if wrapped in wet cloths smell whether it be musty or not the loin first taints under the kidney and the flesh if stale killed will be soft and slimy the breast and neck taints first at the upper end and you will perceive some dusky yellowish greenish appearance the sweetbread on the breast will be clammy otherwise it is fresh and good the leg is known to be new by the stiffness of the joint if limber and the flesh seems clammy and has green or yellowish specks it is stale the head is known as the lambs the flesh of a bull calf is more red and firm than that of a cow calf and the fat more hard and curdled mutton if the mutton be young the flesh will pinch tender if old it will wrinkle and remain so if young the fat will easily part from the lean if old it will stick by strings and skins if ram mutton the fat feels spongy the flesh close-grained and tough not rising again when dented with your finger if you mutton the flesh is paler than wedder mutton a closer grain and easily parting if there be a rot the flesh will be palish and the fat a faint whitish inclining to yellow and the flesh will be loose at the bone if you squeeze it hard some drops of water will stand up like sweat as to the newness and staleness the same is to be observed as by lamb beef if it be right ox beef it will have an open grain if young a tender and oily smoothness if rough and spongy it is old or inclining to be so except neck brisket and such parts as are very fibrous which in young meat will be more rough than in other parts a carnation pleasant colour betokens good spending meat the suet a curious white yellowish is not so good cow beef is less bound and closer grained than the ox the fat whiter but the lean somewhat paler if young the dent you make with your finger will rise again in a little time bull beef is of a close grain deep dusky red tough in pinching the fat skinny hard and has a ramish rank smell and for newness and staleness this flesh bought fresh has but few signs the more material is its clamminess and the rest your smell will inform you if it be bruised these places will look more dusky or blackish than the rest pork if it be young the lean will break in pinching between your fingers and if you nip the skin with your nails it will make a dent also if the fat be soft and pulpy in a manner like lard if the lean be tough and the fat flabby and spongy feeling rough it is old especially if the rind be stubborn and you cannot nip it with your nails if of a boar though young or of a hog gelded at full growth the flesh will be hard tough reddish and ramish of smell the fat skinny and hard the skin very thick and tough and pinched up will immediately fall again as for old and new killed try the legs hands and springs by putting your finger under the bone that comes out for if it be tainted you will there find it by smelling your finger besides the skin will be sweaty and clammy when stale but cool and smooth when new if you find little kernels in the fat of the pork like hail shot if many it is measly and dangerous to be eaten how to choose brawn venison westphalia hams etc brawn is known to be old or young by the extraordinary or moderate thickness of the rind the thick is old the moderate is young if the rind and fat be very tender it is not boar brawn but barrow or sow venison 
try the haunches or shoulders under the bones that come out with your finger or knife and as the scent is sweet or rank it is new or stale and the like of the sides in the most fleshy parts if tainted they will look greenish in some places or more than ordinary black look on the hooves and if the clefts are very wide and rough it is old if close and smooth it is young the season for venison the buck venison begins in may and is in high season till all hallows day the doe is in season from michaelmas to the end of december or sometimes to the end of january westphalia hams and english bacon put a knife under the bone that sticks out of the ham and if it comes out in a manner clean and has a curious flavour it is sweet and good if much smeared and dulled it is tainted or rusty english gammons are tried the same way and for other parts try the fat if it be white oily and feeling does not break or crumble good but if the contrary and the lean has some little streaks of yellow it is rusty or will soon be so to choose butter cheese and eggs when you buy butter trust not to that which will be given you to taste but try in the middle and if your smell and taste be good you cannot be deceived cheese is to be chosen by its moist and smooth coat if old cheese be rough coated rugged or dry at top beware of little worms or mites if it be over full of holes moist or spongy it is subject to maggots if any soft or perished place appear on the outside try how deep it goes for the greater part may be hid within eggs hold the great end to your tongue if it feels warm be sure it is new if cold it is bad and so in proportion to the heat and cold so is the goodness of the egg another way to know a good egg is to put the egg into a pan of cold water the fresher the egg the sooner it will fall to the bottom if rotten it will swim at the top this is also a sure way not to be deceived as to the keeping of them pitch them all with the small end downwards in fine wood ashes turning them once a week endways and they will keep some months poultry in season january hen turkeys capons pullets with eggs fowls chickens hares all sorts of wild fowl tame rabbits and tame pigeons february turkeys and pullets with eggs capons fowls small chickens hares all sorts of wild fowl which in this month begin to decline tame and wild pigeons tame rabbits green geese young ducklings and turkey poults march this month the same as the preceding month and in this month wild fowl goes quite out april pullets spring fowls chickens pigeons young wild rabbits leverets young geese ducklings and turkey poults may and june the same july the same with young partridges pheasants and wild ducks called flappers or malters august the same september october november and december in these months all sorts of fowl both wild and tame are in season and in the three last is the full season for all manner of wild fowl how to choose poultry to know whether a capon is a true one young or old new or stale if he be young his spurs are short and his legs smooth if a true capon a fat vein on the side of his breast the comb pale and a thick belly and rump if new he will have a close hard vent if stale a loose open vent a cock or hen turkey 
turkey poults. If the cock be young, his legs will be black and smooth, and his spurs short. If stale, his eyes will be sunk in his head, and the feet dry. If new, the eyes lively, and feet limber. Observe the like by the hen. And moreover, if she be with egg, she will have a soft open vent. If not, a hard close vent. Turkey poults are known the same way, and their age cannot deceive you. A cock, hen, etc. If young, his spurs are short and dubbed, but take particular notice they are not paired nor scraped. If old, he will have an open vent, but if new, a close hard vent, and so of a hen, for newness or staleness, if old, her legs and comb are rough, if young, smooth. A tame goose, wild goose, and bran goose. If the bill be yellowish, and she has but few hairs, she is young, but if full of hairs, and the bill and foot red, she is old. If new, limber-footed, if stale, dry-footed, and so of a wild goose and bran goose. Wild and tame ducks. The duck, when fat, is hard and thick on the belly, but if not, thin and lean. If new, limber-footed. If stale, dry-footed. A true wild duck has a reddish foot, smaller than the tame one. Godwits, marl, knots, ruffs, gull, dotterels, and wheat ears. If these be old, their legs will be rough, if young, smooth, if fat, a fat rump, if new, limber-footed, if stale, dry-footed. Pheasant, cock, and hen. The cock, when young, has dubbed spurs, when old, sharp small spurs, if new, a fat vent, and if stale, an open flabby one. The hen, if young, has smooth legs, and her flesh of a curious grain. If with egg, she will have a soft open vent, and if not, a close one. For newness or staleness, as the cock. Heath and pheasant poults. If new, they will be stiff and white in the vent, and the feet limber. If fat, they will have a hard vent. If stale, dry-footed and limber, and if touched, they will peel. Heathcock and hen. If young, they have smooth legs and bills, and if old, rough. For the rest, they are known as the foregoing. Partridge, cock and hen. The bill white and the legs bluish, shoe age. For if young, the bill is black and the legs yellowish. If new, a fast vent. If stale, a green and open one. If their crops be full, and they have fed on green wheat, they may taint there, and for this, smell in their mouth. Woodcock and snipe. The woodcock, if fat, is thick and hard. If new, limber-footed. When stale, dry-footed or if their noses are snotty and their throats muddy and moorish, they are naught. A snipe, if fat, has a fat vein in the side under the wing, and in the vent feels thick. For the rest, like the woodcock. Doves and pigeons. To know the turtle dove, look for a bluish ring round his neck, and the rest mostly white. The stock dove is bigger, and the ring dove is less than the stock dove. The dove house pigeons, when old, are red legged. If new and fat, they will feel full and fat in the vent, and are limber footed. But if stale, a flabby and green vent. And so, green or grey plover, field fare, blackbird, thrush, larks, etc. Of hair, leveret or rabbit. Hair will be whitish and stiff, if new and clean killed. 
if stale the flesh blackish in most parts and the body limber if the cleft in her lips spread very much and her claws wide and ragged she is old and the contrary young if the hair be young the ears will tear like a piece of brown paper if old dry and tough to know a true leveret feel on the foreleg near the foot and if there be a small bone or knob it is right if not it is a hair for the rest observe as in a hair a rabbit if stale will be limber and slimy if new white and stiff if old her claws are very long and rough the wool mottled with grey hairs if young the claws and wool smooth fish in season candlemas quarter lobsters crabs crawfish river crawfish guardfish mackerel bream barbel roach shad or alloc lamprey or lamper eels dace bleak prawns and horse mackerel the eels that are taken in running water are better than pond eels of these the silver ones are most esteemed midsummer quarter turbots and trouts soles griggs and shafflings and glout teens salmon dolphin flying fish sheephead tollis both land and sea sturgeon seal chub lobsters and crabs sturgeon is a fish commonly found in the northern seas but now and then we find them in our great rivers the thames the severn and the tyne this fish is of a very large size and will sometimes measure eighteen feet in length they are much esteemed when fresh cut in pieces roasted baked or pickled for cold treats the caviar is esteemed a dainty which is the spawn of this fish the latter end of this quarter comes smelts michaelmas quarter cod and haddock coalfish white and pelting hake ling tusk and mullet red and grey weaver gurnet rocket herrings sprats soles and flounders plaice dabs and smear dabs eels chars skate thornback and homlin kinson oysters and scallops sea perch and carp pike tench and sea tench skate maids are black and thornback maids white grey bass comes with the mullet in this quarter are fine smelts and hold till after christmas there are two sorts of mullets the sea mullet and river mullet both equally good christmas quarter dory brile gudgeons gollin smelts crouch perch anchovy and loach scallop and wilkes periwinkles cockles mussels gear bearbet and hollebet how to choose fish to choose salmon pike trout carp tench grayling barbel chub ruff eel whiting smelt shad etc all these are known to be new or stale by the colour of their gills and the easiness or hardness to open the hanging or keeping up of their fins the standing out or sinking of their eyes etc and by smelling their gills turbot he is chosen by his thickness and plumpness and if his belly be of a cream colour he must spend well but if thin and his belly of a bluish white he will eat very loose cod and codling choose him by his thickness towards his head and the whiteness of his flesh when it is cut and so of a codling ling for dried ling choose that which is thickest in the pole and the flesh of the brightest yellow skate and thornback these are chosen by their thickness 
and the she skate is the sweetest, especially if large. Soles. These are chosen by their thickness and stiffness. When their bellies are of a cream colour, they spend the firmer. Sturgeon. If it cuts without crumbling, and the veins and gristles give a true blue where they appear, and the flesh a perfect white, then conclude it to be good. Fresh herrings and mackerel. If their gills are of a lively shining redness, and their eyes stand full, and the fish is stiff, then they are new. But if dusky and faded, or sinking and ringled, and tails limber, they are stale. Lobsters. Choose them by their weight. The heaviest are best, if no water be in them. If new, the tail will pull smart, like a spring. If full, the middle of the tail will be full of hard, or reddish skin meat. Cock lobster is known by the narrow back part of the tail, and the two uppermost fins within his tail are stiff and hard. But the hen is soft, and the back of her tail broader. Prawns, shrimps, and crab fish. The two first, if stale, will be limber, and cast a kind of slimy smell, their colour fading, and they slimy. The latter will be limber in their claws and joints, their red colour turn blackish and dusky, and will have an ill smell under their throats, otherwise all of them are good. Place and flounders. If they are stiff, and their eyes be not sunk or look dull, they are new. The contrary, when stale. The best sort of place look bluish on the belly. Pickled salmon. If the flesh feels oily, and the scales are stiff and shining, and it comes in flakes, and parts without crumbling, then it is new and good, and not otherwise. Pickled and red herrings. For the first, open the back to the bone, and if the flesh be white, sleeky and oily, and the bones white or a bright red, they are good. If red herrings carry a good gloss, part well from the bone, and smell well, then conclude them to be good. Fruits and garden stuff throughout the year. January. Fruits yet lasting are some grapes, the Kentish, Russet, Golden, French, Curtain, and Dutch Pippins, John Apples, Winter Queenings, the Marigold and Harvey Apples Pom Water, Golden Dorset, Renneting, Love's Pearmain, and the Winter Pearmain, Winter Bergamot, Winter Boncretian, Winter Mask, Winter Norwich, and great serene pears. All garden things much the same as in December. February. Fruits yet lasting. The same as in January, except the golden pippin and pom water. Also the pomery, and the winter peppering, and dagobent pear. March. Fruits yet lasting. The golden ducket dorset. Pippins, Renatings, Love's Pearmain, and John Apples, the latter Boncretian, and Double Blossom Pear. April, Fruits Yet Lasting. You have now in the kitchen garden and orchard, autumn carrots, winter spinach, sprouts of cabbage and cauliflowers, turnip tops, asparagus, young radishes, Dutch brown lettuce and cresses, burnet, young onions, scallions, leeks, and early kidney beans. On hotbeds, purslane, cucumbers, and mushrooms. Some cherries, green apricots, and gooseberries for tarts. Pippins, de on, Westbury apple, russeting, gillyflower, the latter boncretian, oak pear, etc. May the product of the kitchen and fruit garden. Asparagus, cauliflowers, imperial, silesia, royal and cabbage lettuces, burnet, purslane, 
cucumbers, nasturtium flowers, peas and beans sown in October, artichokes, scarlet strawberries, and kidney beans. Upon the hotbeds, May cherries, May dukes. On walls, green apricots and gooseberries. Pippins, Devons or John Apple. Westbury apples, russeting, gillyflower apples, the codlin, etc. The great carvile, winter boncretian, black worcester pear, sarin, and double blossom pear. Now is the proper time to distill herbs, which are in their greatest perfection. June, the product of the kitchen and fruit garden. Asparagus, garden beans and peas, kidney beans, cauliflowers, artichokes, battersea and Dutch cabbage, melons on their first ridges, young onions, carrots and parsnips sown in February, purslane, borage, burnet, the flowers of nasturtium, the Dutch brown, the imperial, the royal, the silesia, and cos lettuces, some blanched endive and cucumbers, and all sorts of pot herbs, green gooseberries, strawberries, some raspberries, currants, white and black, duke cherries, red hearts, the Flemish and carnation cherries, codlins, janetings, and the masculine apricot, and in the forcing frames, all the forward kind of grapes. July, the product of the kitchen and fruit garden. Ronceville and winged pears, garden and kidney beans, cauliflowers, cabbages, artichokes, and their small suckers, all sorts of kitchen and aromatic herbs. Salads, such as cabbage lettuce, purslane, burnet, young onions, cucumbers, blanched endive, carrots, turnips, beets, nasturtium flowers, musk melons, wood strawberries, currants, gooseberries, raspberries, red and white janetings, the margaret apple, the primate russet, summer green chisel and pearl pears, the carnation morella, great bearer, morocco, oragate, and beggaro cherries. The nutmeg, Isabella, Persian, Newington, Violet, Muscle, and Rambule peaches. Nectarines, the primordial, myrobalant red, blue, amber, damask pear. Apricot and cinnamon plums, also the king's and lady Elizabeth's plums, etc., some figs and grapes. Walnuts in high season to pickle, and rock samphire. The fruit, yet lasting of the last year, is the de on and winter russeting. August, the product of the kitchen and fruit garden. Cabbages and their sprouts, cauliflowers, artichokes, cabbage lettuces, beets, carrots, potatoes, turnip, some beans, peas, kidney beans, and all sorts of kitchen herbs, radishes, horseradish, cucumbers, cresses, some tarragon, onions, garlic, rocamboles, melons, and cucumbers for pickling, gooseberries, raspberries, currants, grapes, figs, mulberries and filberts, apples, the Windsor Sovereign, orange bergamot slipper, red catherine, king catherine, penny prussian, summer poppening, sugar, and louding pears. Crown Bordeaux, Laveur, Disput, Savoy, and Wallacotta peaches. The Maroi, Tawny, Red Roman, Little Green Cluster, and Yellow Nectarines. Imperial Blue Dates, Yellow Late Pear, Black Pear, White Nutmeg Late Pear, Great Antony or Turkey and Jane Plums. Cluster, Muscadin, and Cornelian Grapes. September, the product of the kitchen and fruit garden. Garden and some kidney beans. Ronceval peas, artichokes, radishes, cauliflowers, cabbage lettuce, cresses, chervil, onions, tarragon, burnet, celery, 
endive, mushrooms, carrots, turnips, skirrets, beets, scorzonera, horseradish, garlic, shallots, rocambole, cabbage and their sprouts, with savoys, which are better when more sweetened with the frost. Peaches, grapes, figs, pears, plums, walnuts, filberts, almonds, quinces, melons and cucumbers. October, the product of the kitchen and fruit garden. Some cauliflowers, artichokes, peas, beans, cucumbers and melons. Also, July sown kidney beans, turnips, carrots, parsnips, potatoes, skirrets, scores and era, beets, onions, garlic, shallots, rocambole, chardons, cresses, chervil, mustard, radish, rape, spinach, lettuce small and cabbage, burnet, tarragon, blanched celery and endive, late peaches and plums, grapes and figs, mulberries, filberts and walnuts, the bullis, pines and arbutus, and great variety of apples and pears. November, the product of the kitchen and fruit garden. Cauliflowers in the greenhouse, and some artichokes, carrots, parsnips, turnips, beets, skirrets, scores and error, horseradish, potatoes, onions, garlic, shallots, rocambole, celery, parsley, sorrel, thyme, savoury, sweet marjoram dry, and clary cabbages and their sprouts, savoy cabbage, spinach, late cucumbers. Hot herbs on the hotbed, burnet, cabbage, lettuce, endive blanched, several sorts of apples and pears. Some bullaces, medlars, arbutas, walnuts, hazelnuts, and chestnuts. December, the product of the kitchen and fruit garden. Many sorts of cabbages and savoys, spinach, and some cauliflowers in the conservatory, and artichokes in sand. Roots we have as in the last month. Small herbs on the hotbeds for salads. Also mint, tarragon, and cabbage lettuce preserved under glasses. Chervil, celery, and endive blanched. Sage, thyme, savoury, beet leaves, tops of young beets, parsley, sorrel, spinach, leeks, and sweet marjoram, marigold flowers, and mint dried. Asparagus on the hotbed and cucumbers on the plants sown in July and August, and plenty of pears and apples. End of section 38